This video is going to compare Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve for real-time playback capability. If we look at DaVinci Resolve and we go to the playback option, we can tell that the proxy mode is not on. We're not seeing this at half resolution or quarter resolution as far as this setting is concerned. If we go to the setting over here, we can see that it's an ultra high definition timeline or project. We can also see that we're not using half or quarter resolution playback in this option. And if we go to camera raw for red, we're at full resolution again. So everything is optimized to play this back at full 4K. That's exactly what we want to do this experiment, I guess, between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna hit play really quick. And we can see the CPU and GPU usage. You don't want the GPU to go up to 80% when it does the picture picture. A lot of people think if it goes up to 80%, it means DaVinci Resolve is making better use of the graphics processor. That would simply mean it's bad coding if it uses 80% of the GPU just to play a picture in picture back. Now we can look at the CPU and GPU usage and a lot of you are thinking that it's not gonna be able to play back another picture in picture. And you'd be correct because the CPU will be the weakest link. This is going to start dropping frames. Wait till it gets to the second picture picture and here we see it dropping frames terribly. That's not what you want. We can already tell that it can't handle two picture in pictures. Another thing I wanna point out as I play this part of it, look at how pixelated that looks. And a lot of people are saying, well, you've rasterized down that picture picture where it's like 25% of the original size and this isn't playing back at full 4K. That is true, but the image can look a lot cleaner and I'm gonna show people how to make it look cleaner. I'll hit stop really quick. I'm gonna go to Premiere Pro. With Premiere Pro, I can go to where it says sequence, then click sequence settings. We can tell it's the red cinema. We can also tell the frame rate matches the project in DaVinci Resolve. We can tell it's ultra high definition. All these have the check mark. So I'll hit OK. One thing with Premiere Pro that's really important is where it says File. You go down to where it says Project Setting, go to General. As you can tell, I have two GPUs. This GPU is the Intel Integrated Graphics Processor right on the CPU itself. And this is my RTX 2070. I have three options. I can opt for the GPU acceleration using OpenCL but that's gonna use my integrated graphics processor to try and do color correction, picture in picture, motion blur. I do not want that option. If I was to choose OpenCL, I would have to drop down to a quarter resolution just to do a picture in picture with color correction. I don't want software only either because once again, I'd have to drop down to quarter resolution just to do a simple picture in picture with color correction. If I opt for the CUDA technology, I'm going to tap into my RTX 2070 and I'll easily be able to play back a picture picture with color correction at full resolution. So this is set up the way I want it. I'm going to hit OK. I've got it everything the way I need it. I'm going to hit play really quick. We can easily tell Premiere Pro is going to play the cross dissolve really quick. All these clips are color corrected or not color corrected, but there's a color filter on them. You can tell same with DaVinci Resolve. And here we see it playing the picture picture back pretty easy. Most people are saying, hey, it can probably play one more picture picture. You'd be correct, but that's what you're supposed to look at when you're comparing DaVinci Resolve to Premiere Pro. You don't want the CPU pegged. You don't want the GPU pegged either. The fact that neither one of them were pegged the GPU with both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve lets you know you don't really need dual GPUs for DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro either one. It's dual CPUs that would be more beneficial. But here's Premiere Pro playing back two picture in pictures not dropping any frames. Just because it's at 100% for like three or four seconds doesn't mean it's dropping frames. Premiere Pro is trying to read in advance like 10, 15 frames. Just like with DaVinci Resolve, we're seeing some pixelation. But with Premiere Pro, I can get rid of that pixelation really easy. I'm gonna hit stop. I'm at full resolution. If I make it, you know, full screen like 1920 by 1080, it gets rid of the pixelation, obviously. I can enable high quality playback. If I hit the space bar, you'll notice it's playing back just fine. It's not dropping any frames and there's no pixelation. As you notice, the GPU and CPU are both getting used a lot more. I can disable the high quality playback 
set this to half resolution, hit the space bar. As you can tell, the image looks much better because there's not as much rasterizing going on. If I go full screen, I'm still gonna get a really nice image. So it's up to you how you wanna play back using Premiere Pro as well as DaVinci Resolve. And to be honest, if you're looking at 4K video on an iMac or even as I'm watching Premiere Pro on one single monitor right now, there's no reason to have this at full resolution. I'm going to go back to DaVinci Resolve real quick and show you how you can get better playback with DaVinci Resolve. With DaVinci Resolve, we can see the picture picture is a little bit pixelated. If I hit the P key, it goes full screen and we get rid of the pixelation just like with Premiere Pro. I'm going to close this out. With DaVinci Resolve, we can go to playback where it says proxy mode. We can select half resolution. We will be able to play both picture pictures in real time. The CPU is pegged at 100%, but not dropping frames. And there's nothing wrong with this image. It doesn't look super pixelated, although we're not to the rasterized down image. I mean, this is rasterized, but not as bad as this one here. And we're going to see if this one looks pixelated, which it will to some extent. See, we're seeing a little bit of pixelation. It looks a little bit better at half resolution, but there's ways we can clean this up even more. I want to let people know if I hit the P, it doesn't look bad at full screen. It looks pretty decent. I can obviously go to playback in proxy mode, I can select quarter resolution. It'll easily play back both the picture and picture. You'll be able to see the CPU won't be hitting 100% or anywhere near 100%. The image quality doesn't look all that bad. That being said, when we switch to full screen mode, here we can see there's definitely some pixelation in the building. Also like the rails. It's not the best image quality. I'm going to select this, shrink this back down. This is the one that was really looking pixelated. At full screen, it looks horrible at quarter resolution. There's ways to get better image quality at quarter resolution using DaVinci Resolve. Obviously, switching the playback options in DaVinci Resolve can have an impact on the real-time performance and the image quality. I'm going to switch this to off. I'm going to make settings down over here. If we click this icon... As we see, it says red. I'm gonna switch this down to quarter resolution. Where it says master settings, I'm gonna slide down where it says original. I'm gonna switch this to quarter as well. I'm gonna hit save. And you're gonna see an impact in the real-time performance once again. Let me play all these picture pictures really quick. We can see it's playing all the picture pictures. The CPU is hardly being used. The GPU is hardly being used. Nice clean image when we go full screen. Even though it's a quarter resolution, it's a nice image at full screen. I want to end this video by stating with Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, it is up to the user to make sure they have things set up correctly to get a decent amount of real-time playback and at the same time have decent image quality. As you folks can tell, you don't really need dual graphics cards when using DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro. Rather than get two RTX 2070s, you'd be better off getting one RTX 2080 Ti.